Well, good morning. It's good to see all of you here as we have another opportunity to gather together on this day. The scriptures tell us that this is a day that the Lord has made, and we're here to rejoice and to be glad. We want to welcome all guests and visitors who are with us as you have joined us, and we pray that you will just experience God's presence within your lives on this day. As we get started today, I would like to start with uh, just opening with prayer, and then after we open with prayer, um, we're going to get into our, our singing, so let me pray. God, our Father, we pray your, your presence into this day. We thank you for the sunshine outside, the opportunity to be in this place as a body of believers, and we just ask your hand upon all that takes place. Lord, we pray that you will allow us to just calm our hearts and our minds, to just be able to focus on you. And we thank you for the love that you've showered down upon us. And we ask this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. First of all, I just would like you to take note in your um, bulletin. We have a ballot, a sample ballot for deacon nominations. So I would encourage you to take some time to, again, prayerfully lift up and look at those individuals who would be um, qualified to serve as deacon. You will notice uh, maybe just a little bit of a change on your ballot. We want you to think maybe just a little bit deeper and we'll see uh, what plays out next week with the actual ballot itself. But we want you to write down five names. And just think about those five individuals whom maybe you would see uh, God, God calling to be deacons. And then next week when we vote, uh, we're going to talk about it actually at elders meeting tomorrow night. We might be asking you to vote for three individuals. We might be asking you to vote for five. Uh, we think voting for five maybe will help us a little bit more as, as elders uh, to... Uh, discern uh, who you're looking for uh, to serve on consistory as deacon. So consistory, we're experimenting a little bit, if you want to say it that, potentially. So just take note, be prepared with five names. If next week I say you only need to vote for three, then you know that, but we would rather you be prepared and keep it the way it is uh, versus uh, keep it the way it is and then change it, and then you're like, well, I didn't know that. So, okay, be mindful of that. Uh, also, just take note, uh, the names that uh, have been taken off already for those who have been nominated for the role of elder are there, but there will also be some other names that will be taken off as we continue to find our double slate for elders. So um, take note of that. We have the Har Harvest Festival coming up on October 30th. I'd encourage you to uh, be a part of that. If you have any questions, talk to Josh, and Josh will give you a little bit more information on, on what they're looking for and what they're doing. I know he has a theme and uh, so uh, we'd love, to, love for you to join us in that evening. It's a way in which we can celebrate this fall season and the beauty of uh, what God does for us there. Uh, you also just want to remind you that we have just a short little intro here or, or thank you from uh, Joel and Samantha uh, Bowers as they uh, did their mission uh, opportunity and several of you supported them. And this is just their way of saying thank you. So I'd like you to, to watch that. Hello from Nicaragua. Hello from Brazil. Hello from Romania. Hello from South Africa. Hello from Kenya. Hello from India. Joel and Sam here to say, Gracias. Obrigado. Mulțumesc. Que aleboja. Ashele. Amashe. Through your prayers and support, we've been blessed to see God at work. Not only in this place, but in our hearts also. We've seen poverty, redefined our idea of plenty, and witnessed God's grace in the struggle. We've seen God at work in the big and small, and we've done our best to share a small taste of this with you. We encourage you to live with an open heart and mind to see God at work in your community and in your own heart. Grace and peace to you on the journey. Bye-bye. Adios. Ciao. Ciao. Quahiri. Bye. So on behalf of Joel and Samantha, they obviously expressed their thanks and uh, uh, wonderful, what a wonderful opportunity they had and they were basically bringing to us the ability to see what God's doing missionally uh, literally around the world. So thank you. Uh, from a prayer standpoint, uh, you have those things which are in the bulletin. I just really want to encourage you this week to pray for especially a couple people. Uh, Ray Schramm is going to have a little bit more testing done on Wednesday this week with the cancer that they have discovered. And uh, on Thursday, they're going to be doing a port and then determining there from his uh, treatments. 
So we want to lift up Ray and just be mindful of that, especially on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Larry Riebling has been dealing with some uh, fluid buildup on, on his legs, and he's having some more testing done this week to try to figure out what's happening uh, there with him. And so we want to pray for him as he has that testing. The doctors will be able to figure out uh, what's happening within his body. And then we just have uh, several others that are on our, our, our prayer list that we want to continue. But also just uh, I want to encourage you to pray again. We've had him off the list for a little bit, but Michael Block Jr., uh, he's uh, been dealing with some more complications again, just with some of the things he's dealing with, and, and we want to lift him up uh, as, as he's going through those. Uh, so let's go to our Lord for a time of prayer. God, our Father, as we come before you on this day, um, what a wonderful avenue we have to be able to come to you through prayer. And as we come before you on this day, Lord, it just seems like uh, we could literally pray without ceasing. There are so many things that are happening within our own lives, so many things that are happening in the lives of the relationships that are around us, and so many things that are happening in the world. And yet as we come to you today, we are reminded that as, as big as, as this, this world might be and, and, and the number of people that are here, you are concerned about every one of them. You love every one of them deeply. And when we come to you in prayer, we know that you will hear and you will respond. As we come to you today, Lord, we um, first of all just pray that you will be with those who are sick and those who need healing. Those who are dealing with sickness and disease, maybe those who are fighting addiction somehow in some way, those who are encountering maybe painful relationships or, or even a struggling marriage. And we pray that your hand would be upon them, that your hand would give them what they stand in need of, that they may turn their eyes to you and you will provide them with the peace that they might need within their lives and the ability to be able to, to take the steps necessary to, to bring the healing that they're searching for. Lord, today especially we pray that you be with Larry Riebling and Ray Schramm as they will be have t testing done and, and you know each of the things that is happening within their bodies. We pray that you will just make your presence known to them and we pray that you will bring them a peace and just allow them to be able to just trust, trust in you as, as they walk this journey. We think of Michael Block Jr., Lord, as he continues at, at his youthful age to just encounter, endure, just ailment upon his body. And for him too, Lord, we just pray that you can bring healing. We just pray that uh, he will be able to to just be able to just move forward as, as a young man. And I know there are times when it just appears like he seems so healthy, and yet I, we know there's a battle. And so give him what he stands in need of. Lord, we think of others who need you in particular ways. We continue to lift up Dutch and Dave and Cavell and Merlin and Kelly and Mike. May your hand be upon them. Lord, we pray that you be with our election process as we continue to to just seek those individuals as, as elder nom nominees and, and will you just give guidance and direction to this process. We, we pray that as we prepare for electing deacons that your hand will be upon that as well and, and allow us the ability to seek you for those individuals whom you want to serve in the coming years. Lord, we know that in the end your will will be done. As we come before you, we think of the consistory as it meets tomorrow night, and, and we pray that you will give them guidance and direction. And as we look at the budget for 2020, Lord, uh, may we just allow your will to be done. We thank you for those individuals who have served this past year and, and the work and the commitment the dedication they've had to this church and this body of believers. As we come to you today, Lord, we are thankful for just joys within our lives and and I'm just thankful that uh, Josh was able to walk across the graduation stage this week uh, and, and just be with him as he can, continues to, to be able to be moved forward in ministry. And we thank you for the work that he does. I pray that you just continue to be with us as individuals. Just continue to, to challenge us and grow us. Allow us, as we've been talking about wisdom, to, to seek our wisdom in you. And may we know that if we seek your, your direction, our paths will be straight. Lord, in a little bit, we will have opportunity to get into your word. And as we do so, we pray that we will have open hearts and open minds, and that you will speak to us, that you will challenge us, that change will take place. 
Lord, we just pray blessing upon this week, and we think of the farmers out in the field, and we ask that you give them safety in this harvest time. We know there's a busyness to this time of year, and we think of the many individuals traveling on the roads, and, and we just ask that everyone is very mindful of what's happening around us, but allow them to be able to get the crop that you have produced uh, into the storage bins. And Lord, we thank you for the blessing that you give to them. Uh, just continue to be with us now as we have this opportunity to be in your presence. And we just ask this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So today we're finishing up this short series on wisdom, and I grabbed the notes off the back, and I want to read some of the wisdom that people offered up. Uh, be safe and make good choices. Uh, think before you speak. Be kind in all that you do. Always say you're sorry, even if the other person is not forgiving or possibly at fault. Tell your family you love them every day. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Do your best at everything you do, uh, but do it, not for, do it for God's glory, not your own. It is better to give than to receive. Live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge. It is the Lord's to avenge. Keep cool when things get hot. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. The world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. And today is our theme verse, and someone had written this down, and it was, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. So some wonderful words of wisdom. Thank you for those who, who wrote those down. Uh, it was very much appreciated. You know, one of the greatest values in wisdom is our ability ultimately to trust those from whom we are seeking and we are ultimately getting wisdom. You know, within our country and within our society, there's a dramatic de decline in trust when you really think about it, and, and especially with whom we are seeking and whom we are getting our wisdom from. Within our country and our society, uh, we see customers who ultimately don't trust businesses, we see employees that don't trust their bosses, and nobody, of course, trusts the government at some point or another. And, and it's funny because um, pastors aren't even trusted. Uh, in my discovery class with my, my high school kids on Wednesday night, uh, we were talking about our RCA history a little bit, and as we were doing so, we were talking about sort of our Dutch history related to the RCA and we were talking about how the different colonies set out, and one was in Pella, Iowa, and one of the kids said, how far is Pella from here anyway? Because we were talking about a, a church there and, and just how they worship, and I said, well, it's about four and a half hours from here. And of course, they didn't trust me, so right away, they're to their phone, hey, Siri, how far is it to Pella, Iowa? And right away, it was four hours and 22 minutes. So I was eight minutes off, but I just, I told them I was going to use it because they said, that's just the perfect example of our society today. You know, we really don't trust those that are around us. Now, there are many definitions of wisdom. If you go to Webster's Dictionary, wisdom is defined this way. It says, the ability to make right use of knowledge. The ability to make right, right use of knowledge. So a practical definition of wisdom as the ability to make right use of knowledge would be that you know a tomato is a fruit, but you have enough wisdom to know you should never put it in a fruit salad. That mindset. So when we look at the definition of wisdom from a theological dictionary, it reads a little bit different. There it says, wisdom is prudent, it's considered, it is experienced, it's a competent action to master the various problems of life. And if we go to the Hebrew and we translate the word wisdom, it usually refers to ultimately maybe some kind of a skill or ability that has been given by God, especially as it is used by the wisdom of God. So wisdom is having the skills to live life ultimately according to God's plan. Now, if we are truly wise, then every aspect of our life and the decisions that we make are not going to come from the world that is around us, but they're ultimately going to come from God himself. In, in Job 28, 28, we read this. And he said to the human race, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, 
and to shun evil is understanding. In Proverbs 1.7, we, I think many of us maybe have heard this verse. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. You know, we have the ability, because God has given us choices to choose, to either find wisdom in God, or we can choose to just find our wisdom in the world that is around us. And the thing of it is, is if we trust something else more than we trust God, if we're going to seek wisdom in the world versus seeking our wisdom from God, there's going to be maybe a couple of results that come out of that. One of them is, is we're going to be incredibly disappointed. Anytime we expect others to meet a need that only God can meet, we're going to be disappointed. And if we don't trust God, then we create something else ultimately to take God's place. If, if we are going to seek our wisdom other than God, then we're going to create that thing to, to grab hold of our wisdom. In Isaiah 44, 20, we read, Such a person feeds on ashes, a deluded heart misleads him. He cannot save himself or say, Is not this thing in my right hand a lie? And there are many other things that we can put our trust in. And in the end, they're going to be disappointing. We also, if we put our trust in the world other than God, is we're going to be what I would call dominated. In 1 Corinthians 2, 12, 2, we read, You know that when you were pagans, somehow or the other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. So when we think about being led astray and swept along is to be controlled by ultimately whatever is leading us. I want you to think about that a minute. So whatever is first in your life really is your God. And because it's your God, it has control over your life. It has control over the decisions that you make. And eventually, it's going to control you. That, that idol, that thing, if it's other than God, is, is going to determine what decisions you're ultimately going to make. It's going to be the wisdom source that you're going to. So in other words, whatever you value most in life is what you're going to be within your life. So if you value money, then you're going to be very materialistic. You're, you're going to think you need all this stuff. If you value pleasure, it's like, well, I need to do this and I need to do that. This is where what's going to happen is you're going to spend your whole life trying to find happiness. And in the end, it's not going to happen. If you value your relationship with Jesus Christ, then you're going to be able to experience real life in Christ himself. It's that mindset of whatever you value most will shape us. And if it's not Christ, in the end, it's going to warp us. In Deuteronomy 32, 4, we read, He is the rock. His works are perfect, and His ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just as He. That's where our eyes need to be focused. In Psalm 9, 10, it says, Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. I mean, those are strong words. When you hear a word like never, um, it, it's, it's telling us the beauty of being able to trust in God. Our main verse today is from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. So the question is, is why is it so hard for us to trust God and why is it so hard for us to want to seek the wisdom that he wants to give to us? And instead, we, we want to trust all this other stuff. And I think some of that, it becomes a hard issue again. And some of that is because we really haven't grown, we really haven't pushed, we really haven't challenged ourselves in our relationship with God. If we don't know God, it's going to be pretty hard to really trust in God. If we truly know God... And if he really matters to us, then we're also going to know how much he loves us, how much we matter to him. And he always has our best interest in heart. If we know God and the relationship that he really truly wants to have with us, then we, we should be able to gain this confidence that we can place our trust ultimately in him. You see, God's word is true. 
And his word is the owner's manual for each of our lives. He created us, and he knows us even more than we know ourselves. You know, in question and answer number one of the Heidelberg Catechism, we, we read a line in there that says, not a hair can fall from your head without the will of your Father in heaven. That's how much God knows each one of us. We don't even know when we lose our hairs, but God does. And, it's, and because he does, it, it's an opportunity to recognize that it's in him that we need to put our trust. And if we don't know God, if we're not building our relationship with Jesus Christ, then we're never going to be able to trust him, and we're never going to be able to find the wisdom that he wants to give to each one of us. I read a story this week of a woman who was driving through the mountains of west of Denver. She was going to go to, to Denver itself, and, and there, all at once was this big snowstorm. And it was incredibly hard for her to see the road. In fact, in the process, she basically got lost. And, and as she got lost, she was starting to worry a little bit, and she, it was hard to see through her windshield, so she sort of stuck her head out the window to somewhat see where she was going. And all at once, she saw this truck with a snowplow in front of her. And she thought, I'm going to follow that snowplow. And so she starts to follow the snowplow, and it goes up the hill, and then pretty soon it does a U-turn, and it's heading back down the hill, and, and she continues to follow this plow, and, and that pattern continues three or four different times, and finally, finally the truck stops, and the truck driver gets out of the truck, and he goes over to the window of the lady, and he says, lady, why do you keep following me? Where are you going? And the lady says, well, I'm going to Denver. And the man says, well, you're never going to get there following me because I'm cleaning my driveway. You know, if we're going to find wisdom in a world of chaos, then we need to be following and going the right direction. We need to be seeking God's wisdom within each one of our lives. So what must we do to make those wise decisions? What must we do to really be able to experience the fullness of God's wisdom within our lives? Again, we jump back to our, our verse for today, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It's one of my, my favorite verses within the scriptures. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. So that verse really gives us a, a great sort of foundation for what it looks like to trust in the Lord, to be able to really grab hold of God's wisdom within each one of our lives. The first thing we read in that verse is this. We need to trust in the Lord. We need to trust in the Lord. In fact, in, in, in Proverbs 3, 5a, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Think about what that means. You know, everyone has trusted something around us. We have trusted our families. We have trusted our friends. Maybe we've trusted our bosses. We've, we trusted our cars to get us here this morning, our doctors. Maybe at times we've even trusted our government. government. But the thing of it is, is at one time or another, I would dare to say those things have let you down and they've failed you. In James 1.5, we read this. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. See, our problem is, is we've lost our focus. And we've taken our eyes off of God himself. You know, I'm reminded within farming that aspect of focus, and for me, it's mowing my lawn. Um, and that is, is one of the things I always want to do is try to mow my lawn with the hand mower with as straight a line as possible. And now you're all going to go out and look at my lawn and see how straight my, my lawn mowing lines are. But as a farmer, before the, sort of the electronics and the, the auto, auto steer and all that, you know, a farmer always was wanting to have the straightest rows. And so what they did is they had to look out to the horizon at a point, and they kept their eyes focused there, and, and as they drove, their eyes were always out there. If they, if they thought they were going to do a straight line and they were going to look down and just sort of push according to looking down, they would have been all over the place. But their eyes were focused on a point, and then they were able, you know, when the corn started to go up, all the farmers would drive around and look at everybody else's corn to see how straight their rows are, 
And it would give you that mindset of it was because the straightest rows were because their focus wasn't down or somewhere else. It was focused on that particular point. When Peter was in a boat with the disciples, they were in the middle of a storm. Waves, wind, they thought they were going to die. And as they were in the middle of the storm, all at once they saw the appearance of Jesus walking on the water, and, and Peter right away sees Jesus out there, and he, he basically says, Lord, can I come to you? And Jesus basically says, Peter, get out of the boat and come. And it was at that point that Peter had to trust what Jesus was saying, because I don't think any of us have ever walked on water. And what does Peter do? He, he steps out of that boat, and he's got his eyes focused on Jesus himself, and Peter is walking on that water toward Jesus, and, and everything to seem, seems to be really good. And then what does Peter all at once do? He starts to notice the waves, and he starts to notice the wind, and he starts to notice the storm, and he starts to sink because he took his eyes off of Jesus. Jesus reaches out his hand, Peter regains his focus, grabs his hand, and again rises to the top of the water, and together they walk and get in the boat. And then Jesus calms the storm. If we're going to trust in the Lord and we're going to find wisdom in him, we need to keep our eyes focused on him. In Hebrews 12, beginning in verse 1, it says, And let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. And if we don't trust in God, then there is ultimately no access to his power. The word trust in Hebrew literally means to lean with the whole body or to rest one's full weight upon something. In Hebrew, it means you are going all out. Now, I'm curious to know, how many of you ever at one point or another, probably in youth group a lot of years ago, did what would call a trust fall? How many of you have ever done something like that? Wow, a few, not a lot. Okay, if you've ever done that, you know, what happens is is usually you'll have a kid or a person stand on top of a table, and then down at the bottom of that table, there's six or eight people, and they all got their arms out, And they're like, okay, cross your arms and stand there, and we want you to fall back. Don't bend your legs. Just completely fall back and trust that everyone that is there is going to catch catch you. If you've ever done it, it's a scary thing to do because there's that doubt in, in your mind of, what if they don't? I'm going to get hurt. But if you've done it and you've fallen and they've caught you, you, you realize... What a wonderful feeling it looked like to be able to trust. And so when we talk about trust in the Lord, it's that ability to just allow our entire being to be turned over to Him. And and it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. When we think of a heart, it's more than just a place where we have our feelings, you know, those things that that maybe we would typically associate with, with a heart. It's more than that. In the Old Testament, the heart was considered the the center of the mind, the will, and the emotions. And so we are to trust God with the entirety of who we are. We're to trust Him with our feelings. We're to trust Him with our thoughts. We're to trust Him with our decisions. In Psalm 146.3, it says, Do not put your trust in princesses or in human beings who cannot save In Psalm 118.8, it says, It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. Dwight L. Moody said this. He said, Trust in yourself, and you are doomed to disappointment. Trust in your friends, and they will die, and they will leave you. Trust in money, and you may have it taken from you. Trust in your reputation, and some slanderous tongue may blast it. But trust in God, and you are never to be confounded in time or eternity. So we need to trust in the Lord. The second part of that verse says, stop trying to be in control, basically. In Proverbs 3, the second part of 5, it says, and lean not on your own understanding. 
So when we think about the first part of that versus the second part of that, the first part, when we said trust in the Lord, is really a positive admonition and, and how we, we can be in this relationship with God. There, there's there's a, a positiveness to it. The, the, the negative admonition is this. Stop trying to be in control. And why is that negative? Because at some point, we have incredibly limited understanding. We are not even close to being as wide as uh, wise as we would like or think. And part of that's because there's no way we're ever able to see the entire picture. Many of us think that we have it figured out. That we don't need anybody to help us. We don't need God's wisdom. We don't need anybody else's wisdom to help us. We, we think we have it figured out. We can make the decisions in our lives how we want to make them based on our own knowledge and the things maybe that we acquired. And the problem with that is ultimately we're in trouble. In fact, Solomon calls, call, calls that foolishness. In Proverbs 28, 26, he says, Those who trust in themselves are fools. But those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. You know, many times we make decisions. We do so with limited or even at times misinformation. But when we rely on God, it will be the right information that we need within our lives. God is omniscient. In other words, he knows everything. Because he knows everything, that's why we want to, to seek our wisdom from him instead of learning and trying to figure it out on our own. The prophet Isaiah understood this as he looked at his own life and he looked at his own righteousness and as he did so, as it was compared to God's righteousness, realized his place in relationship to God. He says this in Isaiah 64, 6. All of us has become like the one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. So if we are seeking wisdom, then we first need to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Secondly, we, need, we should lean not on our own understanding. And the third step is, is we need to intimately know God. In the last part of uh, verse 6, it says, In all your ways, acknowledge him. When you think about that verse, notice it doesn't say in some of your ways or in most of your ways, acknowledge him. It says in all of your ways. That means in everything that we do, in every detail of our life. You know, and there are some of the decisions that we make that we think, uh, why bother God with this decision? It's, it's no big deal. It's just a simple little thing. He, he, we don't need to seek him in it. But the thing of it is, we can't handle him even when we think we can. God cares about every aspect of our lives. He cares even to the smallest detail. I said it earlier. He cares to the extent of a hair falling from our head. And we don't even care about that. It doesn't matter how small it is. We can acknowledge him. You know, when we hear that word acknowledge, it, it, it carries an, an idea of maybe some kind of an intimate relationship. If you think about a relationship where you say, this is my, my wife or this is my husband, there, it, it <coughs> acknowledges that intimate relationship between the two. If you say, this is my child, and the child says, this is my parent, it, it acknowledges that intimate relationship. And so maybe instead of saying, in all your ways acknowledge him, we could say, in all your ways know God intimately. We will find true wisdom when we come to know God intimately. And when we truly know him, then we will trust him ultimately with our entire being. Now, as we finish, there is one more part to these verses. And I think it's the beautiful outcome. I mean, I think every one of us in our lives wants to have this, this, this path, this, this direction that, that brings the greatest joy into each of our lives. There's this reward that God promises to us, and it gives us purpose for life. The very last part of Proverbs 3, 6, it says, and he will make 
your paths straight. Think about that. Straight. I don't think any of us here, because of the decisions we make on our own, wants a life that's filled with pain and hurt and mistakes and misery, poor decisions, addictions, failed marriages, rebellious children, jobs we hate, and the list could probably go on. I don't think any of us want that. We want the best. And the best doesn't come in this world. It comes when we find wisdom that comes from God himself. And when we seek God's wisdom, he's the one who's going to make our path straight. You know, we live in a world of extreme chaos. But in this chaos, we can find wisdom from a perfect source. It's wisdom that's not found in any man, but it's a wisdom ultimately that comes from God. God has provided each of us with this opportunity to experience the best in life. And whom we choose for our community is an important part of that. What we place first as priorities within our lives affects that outcome. And the decisions that we make as we trust God will make all the difference. And so the question I finish with today is what are you going to choose? You're going to trust in the world or you're going to trust in God. Last week we finished with uh, reading the verse that we had looked at for the day and I want to do that again today, but I, I want to change it just a little bit to make it a little bit more personal. And so I'm going to ask that you read it with me and basically the changes we made instead of trusting the Lord with all your heart, we changed it to make it personal where it's trusting the Lord with all my heart. And I want you to think about those words as you speak them to yourself. And are you seeking God's wisdom? Are you trusting in him? So let's read it together. Trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding. In all my ways acknowledge him and he will make my path straight. Let's pray. God, our Father, we thank you for your word again on this day. And Lord, it is my prayer that every one of us who is sitting here today and literally the world around us would seek you for the wisdom that you bring. That we would trust you with all of our heart. That we would not lean on our own understanding. That that we would not try to do it the way that we think is best but that we would acknowledge you in the intimate relationship we have with you, knowing that you will give us what we need. And in doing so, Lord, what a beautiful promise that you will make our path straight. Lord, the truth of it is, is it's incredibly hard for us sometimes to do that. It seems at times maybe we trust in the world quicker than you. And we say, forgive us for that. And yet at the same time, Lord, allow us to just have those words, that scripture resonate upon our hearts in this week, in these months, in this year, to be reminded that as long as we trust in you, you will make our path straight. And to me, Lord, there's an excitement in knowing that. It's hard to do, but there's excitement in knowing what the end result is going to be. So allow us to be challenged in your word on this day. And we ask this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Just to remind you, if you by chance need prayer uh, somehow in some way, uh, we would encourage you to go over by my office and there'll be an elder I know there that would be very pleased to pray with you. Um, Receive this benediction. It's as simple as what we've been talking about all morning. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he is going to make your path straight. May you experience God's peace in your lives in this week. Amen. Amen.